Greetings, Earthlings. Well, I, it's been a minute since I've given you guys an update on what's going on with the, uh, the TBR 119 here. So I thought I'd give you guys um, an update. I've made a lot of really good progress um, on identifying um, the things that I didn't know that I you know, alluded to in other videos about antennas and connectors for the microphone, stuff like that. Made a lot of really good progress there. Software updates, how I did it, data cable, all that. So anyway, let's let's get into it. So uh, first things first, I have identified what this head is. Now with the exact nomenclature, I'm not exactly sure, but I did find one from South Korea. So these guys have mailed it to me. Um, it was an AB288, like $70 for, for just this part, just the, the smaller part that connects to the base of the radio for the HF frequency range. Um, so, so that was the first thing there. Um, the second thing was the uh, the gooseneck. That is an, excuse me, looking down, I have notes here because I'm not going to memorize all these numbers and get them accurate for you, but I'll put them all in the in the description under the video for you. Um, the This connection here is an AB591. Got it off of eBay. It's a standard military issue for like, you know, the real Frick 117s and, and those other radios that use these goosenecks. It connects perfectly with this and the existing one um, that comes with the, the radio. Um, you know, it, it looks identical. So it, it threads right on to the, uh, to, you know, to, to the radio itself. Um, the regular HF, that's all the same. Nothing has changed there. Now, made a lot of good progress also with the existing um, microphone head. That is an, it's, I, I found it on, um, Amazon. It's an SA12, 12 millimeters. The, that's what the, the nomenclature means. Seven pin. Um, so the, the the dog bone H250 style handset, as I said before, wasn't great in the in the. It works. The the volume is phenomenal. It's just it's very light, and I always was leery of um, the, the the length of life of it. So what I did was I made a dongle. Um, I have the SA12 on on one end. And I have the standard military head, um, and that is the standard military, what the heck is the nomenclature on that one? Um, it'll be in the description if I can't find it here fast. Anyway, um, it's, oh yeah, it's a 283. It's a U283 standard military head, um, six pin, that all the, the military issue, um, H250s, you know, the, the real deal um, uh, handsets with the, the real military, um, connectors go to so what i did was i went on ebay and i had this part connected to a kenwood uh regular kenwood um two pin uh you know the regular two pin that you put in regular bow things whatever and i just cut off the kenwood head found the pin out um you know that that was connected to this reverse engineered the pin out that goes in these sa12s from the pin out that's in the manual and I uh, got to soldering. Now, if you're going to do an all these soldering, let me tell you, get a small, very fine head pin type solder because these pins tend to be small and, and know what you're doing soldering because if you screw them up, they're going to be bridging and all types of stuff or whatever. So I made a dongle. So with that, as I said, I can connect my military issue H250. So it's really heavy duty. But then you can also do other um, headsets like Bowman's and, and, and stuff like that with the uh, the PTTs and the microphone you know all the usual suspects that if you have it on a backpack and, and you're, you're you know you're just humping along um all of the 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 um the connections that go into these standard NATO pins like on, on these type of things all work so if you just want to do an earbud with the um you know the bone uh you know uh, mic all those type of things they all work with this now that said, the regular um, uh, microphone that you would normally, you know, that you can hear easily without being tacked to cool with the dog bone, um, I wasn't able to get that to mic transmit. I could get the sound out of it, but I couldn't figure out the mic. Trend. But anyhow, the H250 worked great. The Bowman worked great with the other, with the Nexus connection. So, so that was all great news. Once again, I have all of that detail and the pinouts in the description. So, so go to it for that. Another thing, I have a friend of mine, Chase, um, he's going to be posting his videos on these, which are going to be really interesting for you guys because he's done some crazy stuff. He's a madman. I love the guy. He's got definitely more brass than I've got because when he got his, there was some parts like the HF 
BNC connector was bent. So it kind of forced him to open it up and, and mess with it. And then he learned what the whole inside, how it looks, how it works, how the, you know, how it's all connected, ribbon cables, all that, which is brilliant. Like I said, he's, he's braver than I, I haven't opened this thing up yet, but he has, and he'll be putting really good, um, pictures and videos and stuff like that together for you to give you those insights. But Chase found this thing. So it's a, um, it's a 12 volt, uh, connector so if you're in your vehicle or whatever um you can connect it the, the radio uses 16.8 volts and 5 amps um this unfortunately is only 2 amps but it's the only thing i could find on the internet even remotely like this that that, that could juice it so if you guys know of something different um that can do that kind of voltage in a power brick let me know but what i've done is I've, i used this um renergy power brick right um, so the, this is great that I have a 12 volt, then they have all the USB, um, USB-C and USB-A and all the other stuff that I can use this, um, to charge and, and run this remotely. If I'm just sitting out up in the hills or whatever, I want to top off the battery, whatever you want to do. Um, this also works with solar. So I can top this off. I can attach it to solar panels. But the cool thing is with this is it gives you a whole bunch of different options, uh, power post type options, pins that go into the battery of the 119. Um, because that power brick I got, the center pin of that power post was was too small. Um, but the mate that it gave me for that just happened to work. So without me having to buy a whole bunch of extra or, or get to solder and cutting heads and all that, as I thought it was going to have to do, it worked. So 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 that was the good news there. Um, the other huge news was the data cable. I was able to figure it out. So basically, you get the standard um, data cable that comes with it, but they don't give you data upload cable um, that comes with it. So I was able to figure that out. And basically what I did was I got, do I have it here somewhere? Anyway, in all these cables. Um, it's it's a YC8. Once again, I'll, I'll put it, that in the pin out in, in the description, but it's a YC8 head. That's what this seven pin head is that goes to a USB-A on the end. The difference between this and the data cable, honestly, is nothing more than pin seven which is power in versus power out. So in the manual, if you get this radio, pin seven is power into this versus power out that would power the dongle. So all I did was basically, I got a YC8 head um, right off of Amazon, links in the description. I got a regular old USB-C cable, uh, USB-A, or sorry, USB-A cable, cut it, figure the pin outs, went wire to wire. Now. When, if you're going to be soldering that little YC8, you better have good eyesight and a real fine tip on your soldering iron. Um, I went through three try, trying to figure it out, and they looked like a total rat's nest, the first two. Um, but anyway, I was able to figure it out. Now I can upload um, software to the radio, um, which was awesome, because that was the, the next major uh, step forward was I was able to update the software on this from the 312 to a 321 version that changed a few things and fixed a few things so one the logo was gone from the oem logo that was on here uh whatever the big wins on it was one it it activated the gyro which fixed the because as you get an error i think i alluded to in other videos that uh on boot up it the the gyro wouldn't be recognized now it recognizes it now that said the compass still spins but whatever i don't care um, so it does give you an actual um, latitude, longitude, um, al altitude in meters. Um, none of it's an imperial, obviously. Um, so all of that works. So, so, but like I said, the compass of spins. So they're going to fix that in, in the next version. But the, that, that, that was a win right there. The second win was I, I talked about APRS. So I was very interested in getting APRS to work with this. Well, the need of APRS software still, I haven't been able to get that working, but I was able to get it on the software update and the three to one update because it enabled Vox. Vox wasn't enabled on the on the original version of it. Now that it is, Vox is enabled. APRS works like a charm with this. So that so so that was another big win. Um, what else? What else? What else? Um, batteries. I was able to get a spare battery. Um, so these are hefty, um, heavy duty metal aluminum on the outside and all that, but. Um, I was able to get one off of the, the same perk buyer that I bought the original radio from on eBay. They, they sent me, now you can buy one for 300 or two for 500. So myself, and because I have my friend Chase is near me who owns one, 
um, I bought, we bought a pair. So it was like 200 and with shipping and all that, 260 bucks or whatever it was each um, for, for the spare battery. So, so, so there was that. Um, what else? We got, we got the gooseneck, uh, we got the head, we got the battery, um, GPS was working, you got the power brick. Um, the, the bugs that are still on here that they're working on, um, the pre-programmed channels is still buggy in that whatever you key jam into it, cause you, um, I still haven't been able to upload, um, channels and all that to it. But, um, the, when I key jam in channels, it still will randomly save them and or the frequencies associated with them with gibberish. It'll either change the frequency to something else um, or it'll it'll do the um, it'll make the the channel label like GMRS twenty two for example it'll make that hieroglyphics or MERS and make it hieroglyphics um, so you, you you won't know what it was and then especially when it changes the the frequency on top of that you really don't know what the heck you had programmed into that slot so that's the buggy they're working on it but once again who cares if you're if you're a, a good radio operator you don't need really to program in a lot of these uh, type of things you, you kind of know what your frequencies are and what you're doing. Um, the next one was uh, DMR uh, updates on this. So one of the cool little features they did is they, they put an easy access that happened to go into menu and then go into DMR and then go into to, to change the DMR settings. You could just hit the, the, the period button on the on the keypad and that gives you quick access to the DMR menu. Now it's still very much the same that you're not programmed uh, in uh, lists of DMR, you know, slots and color codes and all that type of stuff. It's a one for one. You can do a group, but then you're just putting in the group number. You can do a single, you know, single radio number, that type of thing. Um, but it works works good um, on on that. So 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 that was nice. DMR encryption. Now that is still a paid for option. Um, it's like three hundred dollars for that key, and obviously you're going to need another one of these radios. Um, to to purchase that key um so it's it's still not open source whatever you have to purchase it from them through the vendor that you probably bought the radio from um so i'm working with the uh the guoha um technician there's a whatsapp uh channel that he's been really responsive on and answering questions and working with me when i identify stuff or if i'm like hey how do i do this or this isn't working what do I do here and there? He's been really responsible uh, working through Google, Google Translate. Both of us are, you know, it's a bi-directional communication things there, but uh, it, it's, he, he's been really responsive to me, which is great. Um, so I'm still working on the DMR with the encryption stuff just to see how, how I can get that working. Um, anyway, that's the majority of the updates I have. Like I said, also look out for my friend Chase, uh, who's gonna be putting out um, a, a video himself to show you what he's done. Like he's t he's actually taken off this SA-12 uh, microphone head and made it a military um, head. He's just like opened it up, you know, bored it out or made, mounted it, sealed it, all that type of stuff. And he did the same thing for the end for the HF antenna. So he, like I said, he's braver than I, <laughs> ripping these apart. He, he does it professionally, um, he's, he's a radio man. Uh, professionally and, and d does all this type of work so it was easier for him to, to get in and start drilling and, and, and soldering cables inside the radio. Um, I think that's that's it for the majority of the updates I have on it but uh, if you have any other questions or something wasn't clear I was talking too fast um, you know leave it in the comments I, I always try to get back to people pretty fast in the comments and, and you know uh, let you know my thoughts or answer questions you may have or whatever it may be so Anyway, uh, but that's it for now. L you know, look for more updates to come as 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 they arrive, um, and I learn new things or new uh, new software versions, whatever maybe. So until that time, peace. Have a good one, guys.